Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. Can you believe how far you've come in our course? Pat yourself on the back. Now get ready to dig deeper into our software. Today, we're going all in on shaping tools, like boolean operations, the shape builder, and masking. I have set up a cool type design for us. And by the end of this episode, we'll have it nailed down using all these tools. But first, a crash course on the shape builder tool. Ready? Select the ovals and pick up the shape builder tool. To activate the shape builder tool, remember to always select the objects you want to play with. After clicking on it, we now have two options to choose from, merge and erase. Select merge and try moving your mouse over the shapes. As you go over them, they are merging into one and outline is turning blue. Okay, now switch to eraser mode. And it works the opposite way, with a red outline. We are done here, let's jump back to our design. Now the current design looks a bit flat, doesn't it? We are about to fix that with adding depth and splash of color. Don't be overwhelmed by the shape. With the shape builder and our trust the pen tool, it's a breeze. I'm thinking of a vibrant green and orange color combo. We'll use rectangles and ovals for the basics and then let the pen tool work its magic for the details. Once they are all lined up, select them all and merge them together. I gotta say, it's looking pretty neat. Feel free to adjust and clean it until you're happy with it. Now simply copy the shape, change its color to orange, and move it diagonally behind the green object. It's starting to have more depth. We can even go further by adding highlights and shadows. Let's do the highlights first. Copy the shape again, stroke on and peel off. Since we're working on highlights, a slightly brighter green will do the job. Amazing. Now before moving on to shadows, it's time to learn another useful tool. Masking. I personally use this tool quite often. When masking, the shape below will act as a mask, meaning it will crop the other shape on top within its boundaries. Select both shapes and click on the mask button. It's right here in the inspector under the arrange section. You can also find it in the toolbar and the menu bar. This little M letter you see on the right bottom of the object is hinting you where to look for the mask object. You can also see it in the layers panel. And as soon as you click on it, the unmasking option activates itself right next to the mask button. One of the great thing about this function is that you can edit it so easily. As easy as just a double click. As a comparison, if we place the oval below the rectangle, then oval shape will act as a mask. Alright, I believe we're ready to see this new tool in action. First, let's get those shadows in place with the pen tool. Once you are done, hit the mask button. We are not entirely done with the shadows yet. I'm thinking of adding a bit more depth in the background, which we can achieve by switching this toggle on. We can further refine it by tweaking rotation, blur, and even its distance. I'm keeping the same hue, zeroing the blur, and adjusting the rotation to harmonize with our composition's light source. Finally, reducing the offset to 25. Great, now we can add more sparkle to our design. I will import this template from the templates library for a shiny metallic look. Another opportunity to practice the masking function. Select both pattern and the shape below, hit the mask button again. Amazing! Before we wrap up, let's set the stage with a simple background and visit the template tab once again. I got this checker template which I'm planning to carve into a circle shape. One way of doing this would be masking, but we just practiced that, twice. Now it's time to add a new twist. We're going to dive into the last tool on our list and explore something called Boolean operations, which you can find right here under the path section, also in the menu bar. Just remember they are content aware, so you will need to have the objects you're working with selected to activate them. But first, let's get our workspace ready. I've got a rectangle and a circle here. You might be wondering why. Hang tight and you will see in just a moment. Before we get to that though, let's take a minute to understand what Boolean operations are all about. Ready to learn something new? Let's go. 
The very first operation you see is unoid. As its name suggests, it merges two or more shapes into one. However, when you select Substract, the top shape carves its silhouette from the one below, much like a cookie cutter. Looking for a shape formed from the overlapping areas of two others? That's where Intersect comes in. On the other hand, Divide separates the intersecting parts of your object into distinct pieces. And Exclude? It makes overlapping areas disappear, leaving only the distinct parts behind. Equipped with this knowledge, let's return to our design and select both rectangle and oval, hit subtract to give a glimpse of the layer we place beneath our pink background. And now by changing the rectangle's color into pink and removing the stroke, we created an invisible window for us. Looks like we are all set. For those who have journeyed with us until now, you know what awaits. Mock-up time. Here's our design printed on a t-shirt. All right, that's a wrap for this episode. You learned a bunch today. I hope you had fun, and I'll catch you in the next one.